Do Ghibli movies make you cry like a baby, or make you smile and feel like a kid again, or just take your breath away with sweeping vistas and beautiful kimono designs? If you've ever gotten any of these feels, or just are obsessed with collecting Totoro plushies, then stick around, because today we're looking at five iconic kimono designs Ghibli edition. Before we dive in, quick note to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Let's start with Oroku from Pompoko. This eccentric film released in 1994 follows a group of raccoons as they fight back against a suburban development project near Tokyo. It's a classic nature versus civilization story. Basically, think of Pocahontas, but with cute raccoons and big balls. The movie opens with a civil war between raccoon factions as they fight for limited food and shelter. At the urging of Oroku, they agree to fight back against those pesky humans and their relentless need for real estate. As a resident matriarch, Oroku is the voice of reason throughout the movie. She dons a burgundy kimono that can be classified as ilomuji, which are plain colored without any distinctive patterns, giving this type of kimono a dignified and mature feel. This kimono, in combination with her traditional marumaji hairstyle, lends Oroku a sense of seniority and authority. Next, we have Lady Iboshi from the classic fantasy Princess Mononoke. She does a bunch of stuff like saving the poor, making guns, and leading Iron Town, but she also ends up killing the forest god so she she's kind of the antagonist. Lady Iboshi wears a hakama and deep red kimono adorned with fan-like pattern. Although her attire is era appropriate for the Muromachi period, what's interesting is that her kimono is actually designed for men. We can see the stark difference when compared against kimonos worn by other female villagers. Her character design is likely inspired by shirabiyoshi, or female entertainers who sang and performed dances. They would always dance dressed as men and often wore a tall hat called Iboshi. Given her name, the connection is pretty obvious. Lady Iboshi also happens to be the only character in the film that wears lipstick, which acts as a strong visual cue whenever she's on screen. Her fashion choices, combined with her battle prowess, paint Iboshi as an authoritative and iconic badass. Next, we have Anna Sasaki from When Marnie Was There, a 2014 drama based on John G. Robinson's 1967 novel of the same name. Anna is an introverted 12-year-old girl living in Sapporo, yes, that's Sapporo, with foster parents. After after she suffers from a stress-induced asthma attack at school, her parents decide to have her spend the summer in the countryside with her relatives to get some fresh air. A turning point occurs when Anna attends the annual Tanabata festival and meets a mysterious girl named Marnie. We see Anna wearing a traditional pink yukata with classic floral patterns. Think of yukata as a casual version of the kimono. It's perfect for bathing at the onsen hot spring, or in this case, hanging out at a summer festival. Speaking of festivals, the Tanabata is a very real event celebrating the meeting of two gods who can only meet once a year. It's appropriate to given Anna and Marnie come from different eras, yet they meet the same night, thereby kicking off the rest of the story. Next up is Jiro from The Wind Rises, a 2013 historical drama set before World War II. The film is a fictionalized biography of Jiro Hirokoshi, the designer of the Mitsubishi A5M and A6M Zero planes used by Japan during the war. It is a tale of a boy who dreams of building planes and his struggles to realize those dreams while witnessing the events leading up to World War II. The first act, focuses on Jiro's childhood set in 1918 Japan. After reading about renowned aircraft designer Giovanni Battista Caproni, Jiro experiences a fantastical dream where he meets Caproni while wearing a traditional men's kimono called nagagi and hakama trousers. The dream is a scene that is Ghibli in every way. We're treated to sweeping vistas, fancy full aircraft designs, and a whimsical conversation that sets the rest of the film in motion. Jiro's attire juxtaposes against Caproni's westernized attire which helps convey the idea of two worlds meeting for the first time in a brilliant exchange. Fun fact, The Wind Rises was supposed to be Miyazaki's final film. However, in 2017, he announced his decision to come out of retirement to direct How Do You Live, which is expected to release in 2023. Do you think the kimono will be featured in this new work? Leave a comment below. Last but not least is Sam from Spirited Away. Come on now, we can't complete this list without mentioning one of the most iconic anime. After seeing her parents get turned turning to pigs, Sen embarks on a grand adventure to escape the spirit world. In the second act, Sen gets a job at the exquisite bathhouse that acts as a main stage for the rest of the movie. 
Just as the movie's bathhouse was inspired by real historical places like the Meguro Gajoen and Nijo Castle, Sen's bathhouse worker outfit was also inspired by the traditional kimono. Her clothes are loosely based on suikan and mampe. Think of suikan as a loosely fitting top fastened together with strings and mampe as traditional sweatpants. The outfit is complete with a white satsuki cord that wraps around the shoulders. This was traditionally used to roll back the sleeves in preparation for work. Sen along with the rest of the bathhouse workers, wears this outfit throughout the movie, creating a strong visual separation between the workers and their whimsical clients. Spirited Away blends together traditional Japanese concepts and imagery with fantasy elements, creating a masterpiece in storytelling. So there we go, five iconic kimonos from Ghibli. Something most people don't know though, is that the original kimono is also the OG zero waste garment. Many Ghibli movies celebrate the beauty of nature, and the kimono is actually the perfect garment for our planet. One bolt of fabric, minimal cuts, zero waste. A big contrast from today's clothing designs that waste 10 to 30% of the fabric. So for me, as an Asian designer, I've spent the last 10 years thinking about how we can expand on this kimono philosophy to create clothing that is not only iconic, but also works with nature. I'm Shelly from Shelly Shoe Design, a zero waste fashion designer at Harvard. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, leave a comment and subscribe if you want to see more content like this or more of my work. Thank you. Bye-bye.